uh, Patrick Liney, Jack Roslevic, on their way to Columbus. And our next guest is now a member of Jets Nation, Pierre-Luc Dubois, joining us from quarantine live here on Tim and Sid. Pierre, welcome to the show. How bored are you? <laughs> uh, probably a 10 out of 10 right now. Wow. Oh, is, has it already sunk in that it's like you're just going to sit there for a while? Like, I figured you'd be doing interviews. I saw you on Hockey Night in Canada. Like, it, it seemed like a very busy first day already, though, the boredom has set in. Yeah. Yeah, I did a couple interviews today. Um, then the cover of ones the you know, yesterday is my first quarantine day. Um, the team dropped off a bike and the equipment to work out. But, um, you know, I watched a game last night and I watched two other games on the app that, that, that they gave me to watch. Um, and you know, it, it's, it's boring, but you know, when you see, when you see a team, like when you see your team playing and, and you, you're not playing, it makes it even worse. So it's, uh, I'm already, I'm already, I've already reached that point. Pierre Luc Dubois of the Jets here on Tim and said, that's a hell of a hockey game though last night. Uh, I know, uh, the new guys didn't get it done in the end. It was a weird one. What did so when you when you're watching that game through fresh eyes, considering you're you're going to join that group, specifically last night, like what do you see? Like what are the things that go through your head? Yeah, well, I mean, the only Jets games that I've seen are the ones that we've played against them, um, and you know they're a hard team to play against because they they got skill, um, you know, they're big. Uh, but then watching them last night, uh, you know, I, I you know realize that they move the puck really well. Um, guys out there making plays, defensemen on the breakouts. Uh, you know, the Fords, the, the Fords, all four lines were playing really well for the team. It's a team with a lot of depth, and um, you saw that last night in the game. Obviously, it was an unfortunate outcome with the point five seconds left, but um, and I thought it was a really good game. Pierre-Luc Dubois joining us here on Tim and Sid, the newest member of the Winnipeg Jets. I, I like a lot of the kids in Columbus, uh, whether it's Foodie or, or Texier or Jenner, or like, I know they're going to be good, but outside you and Gustav Nyquist last year, no forward had more than, than 40 points. Um, and it's no doubt everyone kind of knows that the team struggled to score goals as you're watching last night and you see Shifley and Connor and Wheeler and Ehlers and Stastny, like how excited are you to join a team with this kind of offensive talent? Yeah, I'm I'm really excited. Um, you know, all the you mentioned there are are you know in my all star uh, all star players in the NHL guys that make plays, guys that uh, can score, can pass, but you know they're also hard to play against. I mean, Nick Ehlers is probably one of the best skaters in the NHL. Um, Mark Scheifele, one of the best centers. Uh, I hate playing against Blake Wheeler. Um, you know, he's he's really tough to play against. So I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, so to be able to to join a team with with that much talent and um, you know, just try to, to fit in somewhere in there. I mean, there's no there's no uh, bad line combination if you look throughout the lineup. Have you talked to Blake and Mark and kind of the leadership core of that team yet? And if you did, how did the conversations go? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, a few we've, um, you know, texted back and forth. You know, it's obviously a little hard because I'm in quarantine, but um, they all seem super and um, I'm really excited to join them and finally be able to meet them in person, but um, you know, they've reached out to me and it's, uh, you know, it's kind of still surreal to, you know, to, to be able to, you know, play and, and, you know, one day meet those guys. I, I know the whole year and a half or the year that we've been in this quarantine has been surreal. Um, but now you, you head to Winnipeg, you're sitting in a quarantine, uh, your dad, Eric, a player in his own right, now a coach with the Manitoba Moose. Did, did that make the idea when you heard the Jets were in the hunt and eventually got you? Did that make the idea of Winnipeg seem even better to have family here? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, my dad's been here for four years, and ever since he's been here, he's been talking uh, nothing but good things about the team, about the organization, um, you know, about the city. Her, him and my mom love it here. And, uh, you know, my first quarantine back before the season stopped, I came here for about five or six weeks. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I wouldn't say I know a lot about Winnipeg, but I've, I've seen enough that to know that, you know, um, I, I can really like it here. And, um, you know, my dad, like I said, said that the, the players get treated really well, the staff. Um, so when I got the call, um, you know, it made it that much sweeter to know that I was going to a, a really good organization, really professional organization. And, um, you know, I was really excited about that. Pierre Luc Dubois of the Winnipeg Jets here on Tim and said, Pierre, there's a, the reaction to this trade and the reaction to kind of your situation, for lack of a better term, over the last 
three, four weeks. Uh, obviously, obviously there's a lot of opinions out there about you and kind of what happened. One of those, and I'm going to, I'm going to dig up a few here, but the one I found the most interesting was there was a section of Winnipeg fans I found who were immediately worried just based on your contract alone. Now I know he just signed the two year deal, but some of the feeling I got was great. So here's another guy who's going to probably want out at some point and we're going to have a hard time keeping under the cap. What have your conversations been like? And I know it's early, forgive me, with Kevin's Chevel Day off. Has any of that been broached at all as a 22 year old kid about what your long term future could look like? Or is it way too early and I should just shut up and move on to the next thing? <laughs> well, I mean, no, it's, it's, it's a fair question. And, um, you know, like you said, it's, it's still so early. I, uh, you know, I, we, we talked and, and uh, you know, him and my agent talked and, um, you know, the, the two year deal, um, the, one thing about that is there can be an extension, you know, this summer, it can be, it can be at the start of next year. It can be after the two years. You know, I still have four years under, under the team's control. And, um, you know, I've heard nothing but good things about this team. Uh, the team I think is on its way up. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of talented players here, um, good prospects. So, I mean, I, 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 like I said, I just got here, but I, I, I've been treated really well since I've gotten here. The team has been nothing but professional for me. Um, and I'm just really excited to be a part of this team and obviously play in front of the fans when it's safe. And, and Pierre, along those lines, I mean, it's the reason I also bring it up is because the torts narrative was very easy for us in the media, as you would expect. But I'm bringing it up yeah. also because of your relationship with, with, with Yarmo and the contract. How big, a, how big a deal, I guess is what I'm asking is, how big a deal was just the difference in opinion contractually in, with, with you leaving and how overblown, whatever the visuals look like, how overblown was the tort stuff? Yeah, it wasn't, I mean, uh, it wasn't, it definitely, my decision definitely wasn't from just one, one thing, it was one aspect or one person or reason. Um, and like you said, uh, as the conversation, as the discussions, um, the negotiations for my contract were going on, you start to think um, about stuff and you start to think about the future and everything. And, um, you know, to, to sign somewhere, you, you, you have to be on the same page, especially if you want to sign long-term, you, you know, you have to be on the same page on a lot of things. And, um, you know, I, I think I thought that it was just, you know, I had no contract. I'm an RFA, uh, you know, and I thought that I want to stay true to myself, to my team and, and to everybody and to sign that, you know, a longer term deal wasn't fair to, to me or to anybody. Um, and then that's when I thought, uh, you know, it could be the right time to take a next step in my career. Newest Winnipeg Jet Pierre Luc Dubois joining us here on Tim and Sid. Do you feel like your reputation was hurt by the end in Columbus? Oh yeah, I mean, I think that people obviously when when the news came out, uh, I think that you know I, I've seen I've seen a lot of a lot of opinions, a lot of people making comments. Um, you know, it's. It's it's tough sometimes to to put yourself in, in someone else's shoes, and um, I know that you know a lot of people are disappointed, upset, angry with me, um, and and you know it's it, I can I can understand, but at the end of the day, I want to stay true to, to how I felt. Um, you know, we only have one life, we only have one career, and I wanted to make the decision based on how I felt and what I felt was right. Um, and you know, like I said, I know a lot of people are angry and. No, I, I obviously I didn't I didn't you know share a lot of details, so that probably made people even more angry. But um, you know I, I tried to stay respectful as respectful as possible throughout the whole process. And you know uh, me and my agent were were professional with the team. We tried to make it easier on them, and um, you know it's, right. it's 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 just part of the business sometimes. One more from me, and I, and I. Uh, we had this conversation earlier in the show. Are you excited to prove people wrong who judge you from one shift? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've had five, 6,000 shifts in NHL and, and, you know, you get judged on one. Um, I mean, you know, they could pick any other shift uh, and, you know, you could, you could paint a picture of stuff of a completely different player and, you know, my entire career, my entire life. Um, you know, I think the people that watch me play, know what kind of player I am. And, you know, ever since, even when I was drafted, uh, you know, it's been about proving people wrong. And I mean, it's just part of the, the business. Sometimes it's just part of the, you know, hockey player. And, um, you know, I'm not nervous at all about, you know, showing people what kind of player I am because like I said, six and other shifts out there. Um, but sometimes, you know, it's, 
it's easier just to look at one and, and paint a picture, but um, I'm not too nervous. Full disclosure, Pierre, um, I have seen your other shifts. I'm aware of, of who you are as a player, who you can be as a player. I was surprised at how that last shift played out. And when, when, um, when that trade happened Saturday, because I'm a Patrick Liney guy too. I, I, I love Patrick Liney. Um, I, I openly questioned on Twitter, full disclosure to you, just being honest with each other here, I said I, was que- I questioned the deal. And half of Twitter, half of Jets' me, uh, Twitter came after me and said, well, guess what, idiot? We got the, we got the best one, two, three centers in the league right now. <laughs> yeah. So you don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> and, there was the, and, and the language was a little stronger than that, as you might expect. <laughs> on, the, on the other yeah. side of that, on the other side of that, Pierre, there were Jets fans, you know, who were kind of, who were either really, they were liney guys. You know, he's at least he's, he, if last year would have ended, he would have 30 goals in each of his first four years in his career. The guy's a player. Or they were a little worried at that visual of that one shift that you're referring to in Columbus last week. To the Jets fans who are a little concerned about the deal for whatever reason, what would you say to them directly right now? Yeah. Um, I mean, I understand that, you know, he was, well, first of all, P- Patrick Line is a, a player. Like you said, he's, he's, uh, he's one of the best goal scorers in the NHL. Um, you know, he's a really good player and I have nothing but respect for him. And I know that a lot of people here that, you know, he was their, their favorite player and, um, you know, he'd probably be one of mine too, if I was a fan, but, you know, coming, coming, uh, to Winnipeg, um, you know, they're getting a guy that, that, uh, can play 200 feet. They're getting a guy that can con- contribute offensively and defensively. Um, you know, a center that can play, uh, you know, in every aspect of the game that, that loves to win more than anything. Um, you know, scoring goals and assists is fun, but you know, winning games is even better. So uh, they're getting a guy that that's definitely going to give everything he has for the team and understand how passionate Jets fans are. And, you know, things that's, that's really exciting. Um, you know, it's just uh, an exciting time for, for me and my career and taking this next step. But, uh, you know, they, they'll have nothing to, to worry about, especially, you know, the ones that, that are scared about that last shift. Um, you know, I'll give them the 5,000 other ones that, uh, that I had. Fair enough. Pierre looked at boy here on Tim and Sid. Pierre, you've been great with your time. Before we let you go, I want to end on a, a positive. I mean, I don't know how much you've been paying attention, but we're about two weeks or two or three weeks into this North division and things are already getting a little crazy. Yeah. Like this experiment up here, this Canadian on Canadian hockey crime is already kind of getting amazing. <laughs> and you're going to jump in here late. You know, is it seven days? Is it 14? We don't know yet, but you're going to come in a little late. What have you made out so far? I know you, I know you haven't watched a ton of hockey yet, but what have you made of this all Canadian division so far? And what excites you the most about jumping into it? Yeah, uh, I, I try to you know to watch as much as I can, and I mean you you just look at the rosters of every team, and you know, every team is, is is could be a playoff team in, in normal format, and uh, you look like Ottawa, who's in in a rebuild, but who are playing so well, you know they're they're playing really good hockey right now. Um, it's 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 a really fun to be a division to be a part of. I think every night's a, a new challenge. Every night's a uh, you know you're you're going against top players in the NHL and. Um, as a hockey player, I think that that's that's one thing that's really fun about this league is that you know a, a lot of teams are good and there's a lot of good players, but you look at the North Division and guys like McDavid, Matthews, Pedersen, uh, Horvat, Drysaddle. I mean, the list goes on and on of of top players in this division. So it's going to be fun to to be a part of that and and to to have a new challenge every night. Hey, this was fun. Uh, thanks for being honest. And and if you're still bored and it ends up being a longer quarantine than you want it to be. Uh, and need to talk. If you know anything about baseball or basketball or football, you have NFL t- if you have NFL takes, yeah. Pierre. If you have some NFL you takes, you can shoot. Picks. Come on anytime. We're live four, yeah. four to six in Winnipeg, okay? All right, perfect. <laughs> All right, man. Be well, stay well. Thank you. 